Hello for you and welcome to your introductory lesson for advanced functions. Our topic today is power functions and our goal, I know what a polynomial function is and I can describe the key features and end behaviors of power functions. So, power functions. Linear and quadratic functions are the two most encountered polynomial functions. Polynomial functions are dis dis um, described or defined like this from your textbook. A polynomial function is of this expression, and that looks like a whole bunch of gobbledygook, but let's have a look at what each of these things mean, uh, where n is a whole number. So that means that our exponents here have to be whole numbers. They can't be fractions or decimals, um, and they can't be negative either. x is a variable, so our x is the variable function. The coefficients a0 down to an are real numbers. So these are any real number. Any of these things are a coefficient, just a number like 4, 3, 2, 25, etc., etc. The degree of the function uh, is n, where n is the biggest one here, the first one here. Um, it's the biggest power of x. Uh, a to n is the coefficient of the biggest power, and we call it the leading coefficient. So if we find the biggest power in this whole string, we, the coefficient in front of it is the leading coefficient. a0 is a term without a variable. Take a look at the end here. This has no x with it, so we call it the constant term. And a polynomial function is a polynomial expression where we stick an f at x in front of it, which we know that f at x stands for y, and if I stick values in for x, I can figure out a y, and then I can graph them as a set of ordered pairs. So what does a polynomial function actually look like? Um, a polynomial function of degree 5 would look like this. y equals, or f at x equals, 4x squared of degree 5, 4x to the 5th, plus 2x to the 4th, minus 3x cubed, plus 6x, plus 1 where we know it's degree 5 because that is the biggest exponent, and then we can have any or all of the, um, the powers of x smaller than x to the fifth as well. Notice that I'm missing an x squared, but that's fine. If I'm missing it, it means that the coefficient um, is 0 of that term. Okay. So that's what a polynomial function looks like. Now power functions are the simplest version of a polynomial function. They only have one term, like f at x equals x. There's only one term there, it simply equals x, and that's the linear power function, and f at x equals x squared is the quadratic power function. Now we can transform it slightly by putting a, a co constant in front of it, and it would still be a power function, but if we start doing anything else to it, like moving it around the grid, then it becomes um, actually one of these functions, just sort of disguised as a power function with this transformation. So what do these power functions look like, and can we tell by looking at it if it is of even or odd degree? Now, even or odd degree means if the coefficient of x is even or odd. So I'm, we're going to have a look at this with Desmos, and I've put in um, the three smallest even-numbered power functions, and I've got y equals x squared, y equals x to the fourth, y equals x to the sixth, and you'll notice they're all roughly the same shape. They all roughly look parabolic, except the higher I go, see the blue one is steeper and flatter at the bottom than the red one, and the green one is steeper at the side and flatter on the bottom than the blue one. Okay. Um, and so, but they're all generally the same shape for the even-numbered ones. Now, let's see what happens if I put the odd ones in, cubed to the fifth and to the seventh, oh, that's not an exponent anymore, to the seventh. Again, they all have the same basic shape. They don't start and stop in the same direction. They're starting and stopping in opposite directions, um, but Again, same basic shape, it's just the higher we go on the power, the flatter it gets at the origin, and the steeper it gets up the sides. Uh, and if I wanted to just take a look at them, cycling through the power functions, if we have y equals x, there's our line, and now let's give it an exponent of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 
So you can see all of the even ones started and stopped um, pointing up. Uh, there's an actual opening. And all of the odd ones uh, went in opposite directions. And of course, the higher the exponent, and it doesn't matter whether it's even or odd, the higher exponent, the flatter it got along the origin. So yes, we can tell the even numbered functions basically look like this. They look basically like a parabola, except the higher you get, the more steep they get and the flatter they get at the origin until they get really flat at the origin. These are all even numbered. And the odd functions, they kind of look like this cubic one. And the bigger the exponent, the flatter it gets at the origin. Whoop, that one didn't look so good. Let's just shift it down a bit. The flatter they get at the origin, that means they have a higher degree um, for the function. So what is meant by end behavior and how do we describe the end behaviors? I'm going to give you the definition of what an end behavior is. When we talk about end behaviors, we want to know what the y values of the function are doing as the x values go off to positive or negative infinity. So what, what are the y values doing? Let's see, for an even numbered function, as we go off, as the x's go off to positive or negative infinity, that means as I move this way, what is happening to the y values of the function? So as I move this way, they're going up really quickly to positive infinity. As I'm going this way, they're going to negative infinity. And that's going to happen for every odd numbered function there. So we can say for the odd functions, um, as x goes to, and when I say we go this way, it's going to positive infinity. So as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity as well. And as x goes to, as x goes backwards, which would be to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity as well. So we just want to describe what is happening uh, as our x's get really, really big, or as our x's get really, really small uh, in the negative direction. Um, an easier way to do this would be to remember what quadrants these are in. Here's quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. And this um, end behavior, we can say, goes from quad 3, starts down here in quad 3, to quad 1. And that tells us the end behaviors as well. Now, what about the even functions? Can we say anything about the even numbered functions? There we go. They look like this. They start and stop in the same direction. So we can say as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity, because it's going up. And then if we look at the other direction, as x goes this way, as x is going this way, all of our y's are going up. So as x goes to positive infinity, because we're going in the positive direction here, y goes to positive infinity. Or again, easier thing to say is it goes from q2 to q1. Much, much easier. Now, is there anything we can do to make it go from, like, say, upside down? Uh, I didn't ask you anything like that, but let's have a look. Uh, can I make it go upside down? Well, hopefully you remember what happened um, if I had to make x uh, squared go upside down. I simply put a negative in front of it. And that will um, be the same case for all of these things. I can say to the fourth, to the sixth, to the eighth. As long as we have that negative value in front, it switches our end behavior so that it starts and stops at negative infinity in this case um, and just flips our end behavior over. And same thing with uh, if we had y equals x cubed, uh, x to the exponent 3. This is y equals x cubed. If I want to flip it to get my end behavior going the opposite direction, I just simply stick a negative in front of that and now it's flipped in that direction. So it starts and stops in the opposite direction. Um, 
so you can remember if there's no negative, um, things with even numbers open up, and if there is a negative, they open down. And with positives, they kind of have, like, think about this, it has a, it's kind of got a positive slope. See how this line slopes up and it's a positive slope? Um, if your odd numbered function, if you just take a general look at the big picture of your odd numbered function, it still sort of slopes up. It's still, as you move from left to right, it goes up on the graph. And if we put a negative in here, as we move from left to right, it goes down on the graph. So it's kind of um, logical in that sense. What can be said about the domain range and symmetry of power functions? Well, if you take a look at the domain of all of these things, let's just take a look up. Remember domain is how, how our x behaves. There's nothing restricting our domain. As we go left to right, we're never losing the function as we go left to right. So the domain is actually any real number, x is any real number for even or odd power functions. Now, the range, on the other hand, if we take a look at these even and odd as we move up and down, um, the even ones, nothing exists uh, at the bottom. There's nothing exists below here. So the range is definitely restricted, but for the odd number, it exists everywhere. So we say that for uh, odd power functions, y is any real number. For even power functions, y is any real number either less than zero, and there should be an equal to on there because it does actually hit the, hit the zero, or y is greater than zero for even functions. And this is the case greater than zero is if the leading coefficient is positive. Remember, it opens up when it's positive, and this is if the leading coefficient is negative. Now, how about symmetry? Well, let's take a look at the symmetry up here. Um, remember, our parabola was symmetric in the y-axis. Um, that's going to be the case here, too, for all of these things. For the even-numbered function, um, it is symmetric in the y-axis. And for the odd, it's symmetric about that point there. If I were to take this thing and spin it, I get pretty much the same function as I had before. And that works for any degree there. If I just take it and I spin it about the origin, I get what looks like the same function. And so it actually has point symmetry about the origin. So there is our word on symmetry. We have point symmetry or rotational symmetry about the origin for odd power functions and line symmetry in the y-axis for even power functions. Now Lastly, we'll give an example here. Give an example of each and explain how you know. A function that goes from quad 2 to quad 4. Let's give a little bit of a rough sketch. And it starts in quad 2, so that's this one here, and it ends in quad 4. So it has to go here. I don't care what it does along the way, but it has to start up here and end down here. So most likely, it's going to look something like this. And what is important here is that we know it's odd, so it doesn't matter what happens here, we can say it's odd, so let's give it to the fifth. And since it's overall slope, if we do look at the big picture, if we trace this, we're actually going down, that means there must be a negative in front of it. And how about here, a function that starts at negative infinity and ends at positive infinity? Um, starts at negative infinity would be it starts way down here and it ends way up here. So this is another case of an odd one. Um, but since it's overall slope, as I go from left to right, it's going up. There's no negative in front of it. So we can say y equals x to the uh, seventh. has to be odd because it starts and stops in opposite directions, um, but it also must be positive because the general overall slope of the graph is positive. And we're going to leave it there for now.